Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's the top of the hour. We're going to give uh, uh, probably a minute before we get started. I can see the attendee uh, list coming on. It's like a slot machine. A lot of people joining on here. So uh, we had a record. Uh, over 650 of you have uh, registered for this webinar. So uh, we're really, really looking forward to uh, hopefully informing you on not everything non-QM today. So uh, give us about another minute, and uh, we've got already over 100 people uh, uh, as far as attendees, so uh, just give us about another minute. Uh, my name is John Geminot. I'm a regional VP of sales here at Angel Oak Mortgage Solutions, and I'm playing an away game today. I'm actually uh, down in our Miami uh, office here, and uh, so again, a lot of people coming on. We'll give it another 30 seconds before we get started. See, it's a nice, beautiful, sunny day here. Ah, uh, still wait, a lot of people coming on. Give it another 15, 20 seconds. Wow, a big surge coming on. Give, well, maybe give me another 30 seconds here. We'll get started. I'll introduce you to our panelists. I'll explain to you what we're going to cover today and what we're not going to cover. Um, Right. Wow, almost 200 people on, which is fantastic. Give it another 10 seconds. All right, let's get started here. Uh, before we get started, I just want to let everyone know who is on the call. This is going to be recorded, so uh, and we'll get this out to you. And, uh, and, and one of the things I really want to promote is Use that question box. We want to answer as many questions as you ask. So uh, let's uh, let's get started. Again, my name is John Geminad. I'm a regional VP of sales here at Angel Oak Mortgage Solutions. This webinar today is a deep product dive into everything non-QM. Uh, we've had 33 enhancements since we took a little pause back in March and April. And uh, so we really want to update you to all the latest and greatest regarding our programs. Uh, this program is not about how Angel Oak has uh, securitized over $8 billion in securitizations. It's not about the two securitizations we've done post-COVID that are still performing fantastic. Uh, it is truly a deep product dive. And to bring you the, the subject matter experts here today, uh, I, we are on separate sides of the country today. Uh, again, I am coming from Miami. I want to introduce... Annie Jensen, who's been with Angel Oak for six years, who's up in the state of Washington. Annie, please introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much, John. Thank you for taking the time to join us. Um, I have been a part of the Angel Oak family now for six years. So I joined the company back in 2015. And I was actually in Atlanta, Georgia back then. And I worked that market for four years. And Seattle is my home base where I'm from. So in 2019, I decided to move back home. And that's been such a great experience because I've been able to reconnect with a lot of brokers that I used to work with um, back before 2008. So I've been in the industry for a long time. Non-QM is bred in and out of my heart. And I'm really looking forward today to teaching everybody about the programs and how we can help you become more successful in this marketplace because I've been able to help a lot of brokers become successful in this marketplace. So we're really excited to bring these opportunities to you. Yeah, and, and Annie is consistently a top producer here at Angel Oak, so she brings a wealth of knowledge. So I want to make sure, please start submitting any questions that you might have off the bat. Uh, and then I want to introduce our second subject matter expert. I had the pleasure of working him with him when he wasn't at Angel Oak. And uh, for about three, about three years ago, Ben came to work with us and was recently promoted to a regional sales manager. So congratulations, Ben, and welcome to the webinar, Ben. We look forward to hearing from you. Share a little information about yourself, Ben. Absolutely, John. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, thanks, everyone, for coming on. We know that everyone's busy, rates are down, so uh, I'm sure everyone's emails are ticking back up again. So we appreciate you taking out the time uh, to spend this next hour-ish uh, you know, with us. 
I actually came from the appraisal side of the industry. Um, I got the, the opportunity, the, the uh, you know, the extraordinary opportunity to work with Angel Oak on, on all sides of the company, uh, managing their valuations and uh, just getting ingrained with the company. It just made me want to work for Angel Oak. So they, uh, they took a shot on me, let me come on as, a, as an account executive, which was great uh, about three years ago. And um, it's been uh, it's been incredible ever since. So I'm, I'm absolutely pleasure to be here. I'm, I'm in the Northeast, so uh, my background is not as good as John's. Uh, unfortunately, I'm out, out of the Philadelphia market. But, um, but yeah, looking forward to it. We're lucky to have you, Ben. Uh, there's probably a bunch of people on the call that would probably prefer you being an appraiser these days. So. <laughs> Amen to that. Amen to that. I'm not immune to those issues also. But you're, you're our win, so we really appreciate you being here today, Ben. I know you've got a lot going on. So, uh, And as Ben mentioned, you know, we're, we want to be really respectful of your time today. So, you know, uh, if we go over and you have to drop off, but we're going to try to keep this to an hour. But we really want to... We really want to respond to all your questions, so please, uh, definitely, um, Ben, we got someone here, Joe, is saying, go birds. So, oh. <laughs> oh. We, really, we really, really want to get all your questions answered here, so without further ado, we're just going to, you know, I already got a question here, one of the questions, what makes a loan, a non-QM loan? This will be the only question I'll answer for you today. Uh, <laughs> Really, what makes it a, a, a loan, a, non, a non-QM loan, is we still have to abide by the ability to repay, right? We may use alternative income documentation to get you there, but we still have to abide by the ability to repay. Uh, something that's different from agency versus non-QM is the fees. 3% of the max fees on agency in non-QM, we can go up to 5%. DTI is another uh, characteristic of of the difference between agency and non-agency. Agency is at 43, non-agency is 40 on the front, um, uh, non-QM is 40 on the front, 50 on the back. And then the characteristics of the loan terms, uh, where we allow interest only uh, on non-QM loans. So um, one of the things we wanted to get here, you can see, hopefully everyone can see the screen here, is our website. It's really slick, easy uh, to use, very intuitive. So one of the, what we're going to cover here today, we'll show you a couple other things that are great tools on our website, but what we really want to cover here today, as I mentioned, is a, is a deep product dive. So without any further ado, I'm going to turn this over to Annie to give us some highlights of our bank statement program, and then we'll get into some deep dive questions on our bank statement program. Annie? Perfect. Thank you, John. So before I dive in, let's go ahead and do a poll. Um, Let's find out how many of our attendees out there today have actually done a bank statement loan. Yep. Yes. Thank you, Annie. I appreciate that. So, um, open, hold on. Okay, we'll give it about 10 seconds. Question is, how many of you Perfect. have uh, originated a, 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 a bank statement loan in the last 12 months? Wow. Just for the record, you know, we started doing these deep product dives about a year ago, maybe a little less, and statistics have changed, my friends. Uh, 65% have not originated a bank statement loan in the last 12 months. Probably three or four months ago, that statistic was closer to 75. So, Andy, this is pretty great. We're, we're, we're making a change in the world, Andy. So, yeah. please, please give us some highlights of our bank statement program. We're making a difference. So that's awesome news for those 65% of you that have never done a bank statement loan. Your world is going to open up to a lot more new business. So what I love about this loan, this loan is going to be designed for your self-employed borrowers that do not qualify from their tax returns. So maybe they just don't have enough income on the tax returns. Maybe they have great income, but they don't qualify in the purchase price that they want to buy in. So what we're going to do on this program is eliminate the tax returns. We're not reviewing them. This income is going to be 100% based on the deposits that are going into their bank accounts on a monthly basis. So we can use personal bank accounts. We can use business bank accounts. And what you're going to do is you're going to work with your account executive to review them and determine the monthly income and what your borrower will qualify for. So what's wonderful about this program, once again, no tax returns, no 4506s. If they haven't filed taxes, if they haven't paid taxes, we are not going to find out on this programs. 
So some of the highlights are they have to be self-employed for two years. We do have an option for a 12 month program, have to be self-employed for two years. We go up to 90% LTV, and what you're gonna find on all of our programs across the board that do go up to 90% LTV, no MI is required. So huge win right there. Interest only, we have an interest only option on this program, and that's very, very helpful, especially once you start getting into high loan amounts, we'll go up to 3 million up to 80% LTV, 2 million up to 90% LTV. So especially in some of these higher markets, I'm in Seattle, so a lot of the self-employed borrowers I work with out in the Seattle market, they love the option of being able to do a higher loan amount with the interest only. Um, Two-year seasoning on your bankruptcies and foreclosures, and then everything we do is going to be on a 30-year fixed. So and what I love about this program is we can do mixed borrowers. And when I say that, I get this question all the time. You know, one spouse is W-2, the other spouse is self-employed. So we can do the mix. We can do a W-2 borrower and we can do a self-employed borrower on this program at the same time. Um, if both of the borrowers are self-employed and have separate businesses, we can even use both of the separate businesses. So there's many ways we can get creative um, using different bank accounts to qualify borrowers on this program. Right. Yeah, any questions are coming in. And, and Christina, okay. you've done many, many bank statements. You know, Thank you. We really appreciate your business. Um, so a couple of questions here, Ben, you know, they talk about um, one of the questions here, can you clarify the interest only feature? You know, we're hearing a lot more people wanting to go to the interest only route. Ben, clarify a little bit more how we qualify the bar with interest only. Uh, absolutely, John. I mean, the IO is it, it, exactly what Andy said. is a very, very popular piece to this, especially when you get into these higher loan amounts. Um, you know, it's it, it. You know, you look at it as a traditional IO option. We're gonna we're we're gonna qualify it all, um, uh, you know, off the full. But uh, you know, it's. Uh, I'm not sure if you want me to elaborate too much on there, John. But uh, how we are you asking how how we calculate that payment or? Yeah, really, how we calculate the IO and the term and. and yeah. Sure. I have a quick little cheat sheet here on the IO, uh, if you if you uh, don't mind. It's already out of pronounced. Um, <laughs> it, 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 the IO does have a minimum 700 FICO. That, that's one thing. You know, we definitely want to uh, definitely want to comment. Uh, it is eligible for for second home also investment. It's available on on all of those products. So second home is a max 70. But um, you know, it's the loan amount times interest rate divided by 12 months is how we're going to determine that payment. Um, you know, it's a pretty pretty standard calculation for the IO. Cool. Yeah, and Annie, uh, one of the questions that came in here through the panel, and I encourage everyone to use that uh, question panel just for, you know, we can keep track. We'll also keep track of your questions if we don't answer them, and we'll get your local account executive to answer those questions for you uh, no later than tomorrow. Again, this is being recorded. We will get this recorded out to you before end of day tomorrow also. So I uh, appreciate a couple of people have asked those questions. Annie, talk about, you know, talk about business bank statements and how we calculate that expense factor and what deposits we'll use. And if you can kind of, excuse me, go in a little deeper on that. Perfect. Before I jump into that, I also want to add um, to Ben's answer about the interest only. So the interest only option, you really want to think of it as a 40 year loan. So the first 10 years, they're going to have that interest only payment, and then they're going to go into the fully amortized payment the next 30 years. When we qualify for DTI purposes, and I get this question all the time, we're non-QM, as John mentioned earlier, we fall under all the rules of ATR. So when it comes to income, we're gonna make sure they fully qualify ATR. So we are gonna qualify for DTI purposes under that fully amortized payment. We are not gonna qualify on the interest only payment. So after the loan closes, they have the option of doing that interest only payment, but for DTI, we qualify on fully amortized. Now, jumping into the business bank statements, um, the way that we're going to be reviewing the income on that is flat out the first review. We're going to use 50% of those deposits. Now, during the pre-qual process, when you're working with your account executive, we're going to be asking the borrowers to fill out a business questionnaire. Now, the purpose of this business questionnaire is we want to find out the size and the type of business they have. How many locations? How many employees do they have? Are they working from home? Is it a large business? Do they have a retail? Do they have a car dealership? These are all going to be very important factors that are going to go into the final income determination. So 
If we have a borrower and let's say they have a small business CPA, they work from home, then if we have a CPA letter, then we can use up to 70% of those deposits to qualify with a 30% expense factor. If we have, let's say a larger business, maybe a car dealership, they have two locations, then we're gonna be looking at anywhere from using maybe 30% of those deposits because they're gonna have a lot more overhead. And so this is all gonna be um, determined when you're working with your account executive during the prequel. Yeah, so, you know, and, and, and I think Andy brings up a great point here. You know, we're gonna do this all up front. It's not we're sending you and your borrower with a prequel letter. You know, Ben, Annie, every account executive at Angel Oak is going to do all that hard work for you up front. They're gonna, we have a team of experts that calculates that income for you. And then your account executive is going to work with you on what expense ratio we should use. Joe, you have a really good question about a W, I'll answer this one because I don't want uh, Ben or uh, Annie to have to say no, but <laughs> you talk about a W2 bar who just recently converted to self-employed, same business. We do, as Annie mentioned earlier, we do require a two year history of being self-employed. Um, ben, another great question here from Jesse. Uh, what determines whether we'll use 12 or 24, Ben? Uh, well, it, it is, um, you know, it is up to, to the borrower, to, to you, uh, whether you want to go 12 or 24. We always want to encourage a 24 month. Um, there is a rate enhancement to do a 24. So, and to say that if that 12 income, if we need that income, we can always switch it into a 12. So it's always better to come in with that additional documentation. We, we'll get that run for you. Give us 24 hours, and we'll get a we'll get a 12 and a 24 snapshot of what that income looks like. So, you know, if we if we need to go 12, we will. But we always want to recommend you start at the 24. Yeah, and we're doing a lot of heavy lifting for you up front. We're gonna our team's calculating, you know, those 24 months of bank statements, and then your account executive is gonna sit with you. You might have had someone who was really affected by COVID, and maybe you know their most recent 12 months are really strong, but their prior 12 months might not be that strong and that can drag down the the, 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 the average weighted uh, income. We'll stick with the most recent 12. Let us help you make that decision. Get us the 12 up front, we'll calculate the income for you and then determine which way we should roll. Um, Christina, thank you. She's got a $2.6 million loan in with Angel Oak right now. So Christina, we you've done many of these loans. I know Christina, we really, really appreciate your business. So uh, thank you. Um, so what if you have a self-employed borrower and a W-2 spouse? Annie, help us out here. Help this loan officer out. Perfect. Love it. We do these all the time. So if we are doing self-employed borrower W-2 for the self-employed borrower, then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be either getting those 12 or 24 month statements, business or personal. If we're using personal and we see the direct deposits from that W-2 borrower, not a problem. What we're going to do is we're going to back those deposits out and the only information we are going to be asking from that w2 borrower is a full month's pay stubs and then their 2020 and 2019 w2s even working with the w2 borrower we are not going to order a copy of the 4506s so we're just going to get the w2s the pay stubs underwrite their income directly off of that and then we will proceed and calculate the bank statement income either from the personal or the business statements so not a problem and what's super helpful even on the bank statement program working with a w-2 and a bank statement borrower um and we'll dive into this more when we get into the full doc programs but we will use the credit score of the primary wage earner so on this particular scenario where we can prove on the bank statement program who our primary wage earner is and if they have the higher credit score then they do get the benefit of using that higher credit score so do these loans all the time, mixing them, not a problem. Uh, yeah, thank you, Annie. So Carl, hopefully that answers your question. God, we got a ton of questions coming in here. We will, if we don't get to your question specifically, we will get your account executive to reach out to you to answer your questions and hopefully, you know, elaborate a little bit more. Nick, you had a question here about retirements. They have to be self-employed for 24 months. So, but I think we have a program, Nick, that we might be able to help you out with. Uh, later on, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, you know, someone asked about what's the interest only hit for for that interest only. And again, these are very self-employed borrowers are very savvy borrowers, so they're all about cash flow. So we've got a bunch of I/O questions here. Mm -hmm. Ben, what's the hit for the I/O? Uh, 
It's a quarter. Um, yeah, it, it, it's general cost of quarter quarter um, in order to go. Um, I think there is a top top tier. No. Um, well, actually, in the, in the max LTV bucket is a, it's got a little more sting to it as a half in the in the top LTV buckets. But um, when, you know, when you're talking about a self-employed borrower and they're not either reporting income or they're writing off um, the majority of their income, you're right. Most of the time, that doesn't play a huge role because you know that that little hit may not mean much compared to what they're saving um, by amending their tax returns or having to go back to the drawing board to buy the house that they want. So it um, a lot of times we don't see too many concerns on on the, on that side of it because it's minimal. Yeah, gr great, Ben. And guys, a lot of questions still coming in. Uh, uh, what do we got here? Sorry. Um, you know, just to put things in perspective, if if you really look at that self-employed universe out there, right? There's uh, approximately 58 million people that are self-employed. It's bigger than the VA business. So think about that. You know, I, I know a lot of loan officers play in that VA world, but think about pivoting and, and moving to looking at some of your self-employed borrowers. Uh, so how long, Annie, how long does it take to get that income calculated from the bank statement review team? So right now our turn times do fluctuate because everything we do is always going to be dependent on volume and what's coming in. But our goal is to always have them reviewed within 24, 48 hours for you. Um, and I always tell everybody, you know, because uh, I get this question all the time, which which account should we use? And I always tell everybody, see if you can get both of them from your borrowers, because there is a difference in how we calculate income. All of the AEs, we review bank statements, we're experts at it. We're going to be able to take a quick look at them and say, okay, this bank account has the strongest cash flow. Plus, when we're reviewing the personal bank statements, if we have a copy of the business account and we can see expenses coming out of the business account, then we can use 100% of the deposits flowing into that personal account. So I always highly encourage all my brokers, look, get both sets of the personal and the business if you can. Let me take a quick look. Let me see where a majority of the cash flow is coming through, and then we'll get it over to our review team. They'll review it and they'll have those answers back to us within 24, 48 hours. I, I think lot, yesterday I sent one over and I had it back in five hours. So it really is just dependent on the volume and what's coming through at that time. Yeah. And the great thing about it, this is the income we're going to use at the underwriting stage. So you're not going to, you know, get this right up this prequal letter. We're going to use $15,000 for that self-employed borrower. And then it comes in, we're going to use something else. This is the income we're going to use throughout the underwriting process. So, uh, and Christine is going to start making me blush. She loves, 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 loves <laughs> Angelo. So, uh, but we, we appreciate that, Christina. Um, we had a question here. So Yolanda, hopefully that answered your question about the turn times for um, for calculating bank statements. Because we're getting 25 minutes past the hour. We have a lot of other great programs. 60% of our business is done in bank statements. So every AE at Angel Oak is an expert on that self-employed borrower. Please trust us with your business. Uh, we'll get your other self-employed questions answered here. Uh, after the call, and we, we'll run a little long here if we need to, to come back to bank statements and get some of these questions answered. Uh, we've done that in the past. We'll do it today if needed. So uh, we're, we are going to move on program-wise here because we, we have a, a we're, we want to be considerate of everyone's time. And uh, next program we're going to talk about, we're going to let Ben talk about Platinum. Uh, let me get here, Ben. i got to move a couple boxes here. Sorry about that. Hold on. Move you guys over here. Uh, let's talk about our platinum program. Ben, give us an overview here. Absolutely. Um, you'll hear a lot of uh, uh, platinum is our is our, one of our full doc uh, programs. You'll hear a lot, and you can actually see it on your screen that it's it categorized as platinum jumbo. Um, the minimum loan amount on this is two hundred fifty thousand, so it's not a true jumbo in in that aspect. It doesn't have that minimum, uh, you know, five forty six. But um, you know, it does go up to three million. Um, there are exceptions to go above that three million. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, our underwriters want me to say that in front of everyone, but uh, if you do have those, uh, <laughs> if you do have those scenarios, definitely send them to your local account executive, and we can get a quick look at them. Uh, our platinum is our top tier full doc, so it does have a lower seasoning uh, than traditional world of seven year, but uh, it's a four year uh, for foreclosure, short sale, deed and lieu. Uh, it's available for owner option, second home, non owner rock. Um, so it's it's your it's your traditional full doc W two borrowers. Um, at the, does have the 40 year IO uh, available on it. And I apologize, Annie, I totally messed that question up. Uh, I, I, 
That's by mistake. Um, we are eligible on non ornamental condos uh, on all of our programs. So that's, uh, you know, one thing that we do have eligible on this program as well. Uh, the only thing with non ornamental is we do want to see why it's non ornamental. Uh, investor concentration is not an issue, but when you have those entities that own high percentages, major, major lawsuits, things like that, that can, you know, we do a quick check on that beforehand. And I think you'll see a theme between all of this is just get with your local account executive, any concerns, we get all of that checked out ahead of time. We, we'd rather get you a quick no than a slow, you know, a quick yes and a slow no. Um, so we have a scenario desk. We run every question through. If we have, a, you know, if your account executive doesn't know everything, which no one does, uh, we'll get an answer for you from an underwriter. And that decision is uh, is solid throughout. So, um, the Platinum, Platinum is a great program. It's a big, it, the most popular part of that program is fallout. Uh, when you have someone who just isn't over that seven year, uh, you know, issue uh, with with past housing or, or foreclosure, and you don't know it until <laughs> in, until you get into that borrower's credit, and you're like, oh, wait a minute. Um, but uh, it, you know, it's a great program. There's no MI. It goes up to 95 LTV. So it's uh, it's, it's really competitive. Yeah, Ben, you just mentioned, and one of our 33 enhancements most recently was adding that 95 LTV to this platinum program. And uh, it's a really, you know, I've heard from uh, the account executives that that has really gotten a lot of response recently. So uh, it's really, um, uh, it's become a huge program. I, um, uh, ben, we're going to talk about where you can price a bank statement loan. As I mentioned earlier, this is being recorded. Uh, we will, if we don't get to your questions, we will get your questions answered by your account executive. Um, but but, but um, I'm sorry, Ben, we will talk about our quick quote tool after we get through our programs and we'll talk also, we really want you to stay on to the end of the hour because we're gonna really talk how, Andy's gonna show us how you can really grow your business with some of the marketing tools that we have. So. Uh, Annie, what's the maximum DTI on the Platinum program? Ah, great question. So it's going to be 40 on the front end and 50 on the back end. So huge win for your jumbo borrower if they have that higher DTI conventional. So Carl, again, another great question. We really appreciate this. And then John, uh, you, you also asked a question and Ben, yeah, that is a 95% one loan, no MI, that, yes. Your eyes are not deceiving you. On the screen is 95% LTV, no MI. So, John, hopefully that. Um, yeah, Cecilia, we're going to show you the marketing flyers. I promise before the end of the hour, we're going we're gonna to show you some marketing flyers. Uh, Annie, let's talk about another full doc program we have that's really, really, it's a, it's a good catch-all. Uh -huh. So let's talk about Portfolio Select. Perfect. Okay. So the main difference you guys are going to see between these two programs, Portfolio Select and our Platinum, they're both 100% full doc. It's all going to be based off the credit scores. So our Portfolio Select goes down to a 620. And what is great about this program is even with a 620, we can go up to a $2 million loan amount. So I see this all the time in my market. You have borrowers, they make a great paycheck but they have a few dings on their credit and it's hurting that credit score. So Portfolio Select, that is going to be the program for you. Now, it's super helpful, I wanna mention, for both of the full doc programs, especially when it comes to your self-employed borrowers. If they're going full doc, especially on our Platinum, then our underwriting guidelines are a lot lighter than what you're gonna find under your typical agency guidelines. So for example, your borrowers will prepare their own profit and loss statement. We have no liquidity testing. The DTIs are lighter. Our reserve requirements are so much lower. We're talking six months requirements for your reserves. We allow gift funds. Even on some of these jumbo loans, you can use gift funds. So there's so many ways on these loans, you can get these borrowers into these loans. And then what I mentioned earlier, we will use the primary credit score um, the, the primary wage earners credit scores. So I get these scenarios all the time. One borrower, great income. You need the income from the second co-borrower. Their credit score is in the tank, or maybe they have a blemish on their credit report. We're okay with that. We're okay with the disputes. So anytime you have any type of credit issues, we're two years out on a bankruptcy on this program, one year out on a foreclosure due to loot and short sale. 
So this program is really designed lower credit score borrowers, any type of credit issues, and you're going, oh, I can't put them in anything. No, think of Angel, I'll pull this program up. I guarantee you we're gonna have a way to fit them in going full doc under this program. Yeah, great program. And we kind of refer to these are our, our, our waterfall of, of programs. Like we have that prime jumbo, we've got platinum, we've got portfolio select. So we can move your borrower to whatever fits for their full doc needs. So um, great, we're gonna talk about, yeah, so Christina, yes, to answer your question. Um, and, and, and we love that you work with Bob and Eric, great guys. So Christina, we really appreciate that. Um, but Christina, we will use the, the higher FICO of the primary wage earner. So uh, thank you again for your, for your partnership. Um, ben, we're gonna we're gonna move switch gears here. We're we're get, moving along with halfway past the hour. Um, let's talk about you know our other second most popular program, but is moving up the charts really quickly because of what's happening in the agency world. Uh, let's talk about our ICF then. But before we talk about that ICF, let's do another poll question here. Um, we're gonna we're gonna throw up a poll question here. Um, uh, we're going to do the second poll question. How many of you on this call today have originated an ICF, which is an investor cash flow program, or some other people refer to it as a debt service coverage program for non-owner occupied? Let's take about 10 seconds here to um, do this poll and we'll give you the results. I'm anxious to see because the bank statement results have changed in the last three or four months. So that's it's going to be really interesting to see what comes on. I would venture to say this one changes as well, John. I would bet this is uh, this is becoming an extremely popular program. Uh, I, I would venture to say a lot of people on this call want to know more about bank statements and this program specifically. If if I if I was a betting, people man. think I was just glossing over our full doc programs, but I know there's a need out here. We're seeing it. This program has gone from probably 25% of our of our business to to probably closer to 40, you know, the high 30s. Uh, low 40. So, all right, the poll question's in. 84% of you have not, have not originated a debt service coverage or what we call internally the investor cash flow program in the last 12 months. This is, I, I love it. The, the opportunity is huge here, Ben. And the opportunity, before you cover the highlights here, Ben, the opportunity, we all know what's happening on that agency side of the world, right? They're capping your portfolio cannot be more than 7% of your portfolio can be second homes or investment properties. And if you are if you are selling directly to Fannie and Freddie, we already know most people, they're at 13 to 15% of their portfolio. So guess what? If you're over the 7% now, they're cutting you back to 3% until you get back. You know, so until you get back under 7%, so we've seen this product explode. I even last week had someone reach out to me and say, can we broker agency non-owner occupied to you till, till we get under that 7%? It's crazy. Ben, I'm gonna let you take it from here. Give us the highlights <laughs> of the debt service coverage program. Absolutely, Jeff. I, I think we could probably spend an hour on this program alone. It, it is becoming that popular uh, because it's, it, it, is an easy loan. I mean, that, that's really, uh, there's almost no other word to kind of describe it. Uh, it goes up to a, to a million and a half. Minimum loan amount is 75,000. You kind of want to keep that at 100,000. Honestly, we do have a 65 LTV if you go below 100. So you probably want to keep that at 100. But what this program is, is it's a no income, no employment, no ratio investment property. Uh, we say it's perfect for investors. You don't have to have investment experience. This could be your first investment property. Um, but the property itself cash flows. So the property qualifies on its own market rent analysis determined by an appraiser on a purchase. Or uh, if it's a refi and you have a renter currently in there, uh, then we could qualify it off, off the rental, um, uh, off the rental um, pay, the, the rent uh, paid collected. So it's, it's a max 80 purchase. It's a 75 refi. It's also a 75 purchase if you go multifamily. So this is eligible up to four units. Uh, the one thing we one thing is not eligible in this program is mixed use. Uh, that's that's not in our wheelhouse. But um, there's no 4506. There are, is no income. There's no there's no anything. 
uh, you're really a FICO score and an appraisal on this product. Um, and I, that's, I'm not, I'm not making that up. Some people just scratch their heads when you start talking about that. It's like, wait a minute, what do you mean? Um, we don't even need income, employment, or liabilities imported on the 1003 when we get when we, when 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 you send this into us. Um, you can vest properties in an LLC. That's a big big part of this program. Um, it's it's you can vest title. That's not a problem at all. And we have no caps on property counts. So you see a lot of that where you get caps of Fannie Freddie, even worse so now. But you know at that seven uh, finance property, they can own hundreds of properties and do a loan with us. Uh, we like to say we max out at five total refinance with Angel Oak ourselves. We can go above that with certain exceptions depending on the whole package. But uh, just as a general rule, we, we you know we kind of max out at five. Um, Non-mortimable condos still okay. Uh, that, that's absolutely eligible. Again, depending on on why IO is absolutely available on this program. And when, when I say it's just an appraisal, that's really the beauty. Now appraisal is a little bit tough right now, but um, Especially when you get into cash outs and things like that, the property has to be occupied. Uh, we don't it, on a refi, not a purchase, obviously. So um, it's got to be occupied. We don't, we don't do anything rural. That's uh, I want to give that one caveat out there to everyone listening. So uh, rural and vacant is something we don't normally tend to do on a on a, on a refi. But um, and these are these are great programs, and it's a great performing loan. So when you have someone who either doesn't report all of their rental income. Uh, they have DTI issues. It becomes a train wreck uh, of a loan with, with someone else uh, as you're trying to fit this in in an agency space. Um, we take transferred appraisals also, so keep that in mind. Uh, it, it, it's extremely fast. It's extremely easy. Um, we, you know, we want 24 months of housing history. We want you to be clean on, on housing payments. We, we allow a ding out there in, in, you know, in that 13 to 24 months. Um, again, if you have something send it up. We can get exceptions on, on quite a few different uh, options. Yeah, Ben, you bring up a couple of really good points there. Joe, hopefully Ben answered your question about closing in an LLC. So we appreciate the questions. Again, this is being recorded. We will get this out to everyone before end of day tomorrow. Uh, Annie, question from Wayne. Do you have to own a home today? Wonderful question, Wayne. Very important question because the answer is yes. Now, Ben mentioned if you're buying your first investment property, not a problem. This is very crucial. They have to have a primary residence, especially if they are buying their first investment property. Occupancy concerns is something we do look at. If the red flags are playing, if their primary is valued at $500,000 and they want to buy their investment property at $700,000, yeah, underwriter is going to be like, nope, not happening. Everything's red flags. They're, they're, they might move into this property. So have to own a primary now have there been times been mentioned we get exceptions we ask for exceptions across the board on all deals i have gotten exceptions on this program i did a property out here 1.7 million we got that exception i have worked with borrowers where they own a portfolio of investment properties but they are renting for whatever reason we have been able to get that exception because they're doing a cash out refinance so we show they have tenants in there um, so there are exceptions given to this program. Another highlight I do want to point out that's going to be a huge win is, you know, I get a lot of loans on this program from hard money guys. You know, you get borrowers, they get into hard money, they want to do a fix and flip. Now they need a refinance out of it and they want to bring it out. After six months, we can use the new appraised value for your cash out. So seriously, I'm in the Seattle area, hard money is huge up here. If you guys need a referral outlet, pick up the phone, call into hard money lenders. They need outlets, their business is not to hold on to these. Let them know you have options. I guarantee you, you will get referrals. Yeah, Annie, great, 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 great point. It's, you know, uh, and, and, and what we're seeing even more, everything we do, all of our programs are available for purchase, refis, cash out. We've seen all properties across the country appreciate and a lot more people are looking at cash out. So, uh, and specifically on their investment properties, so they can go buy other investment properties. So, uh, really think And John, that, can I, um, yeah, John, can I add on one thing to that also? Yeah. Uh, we also offer delayed financing on, mm -hmm. on these farms. So, if, if you have a borrower and cash is king out there, we all know that everyone's coming in, especially in the major metros, they're coming in, they're snatching up properties with cash. 
close as fast as they can. It's attractive. If they want to get their cash back, we can actually do that as a underwritten as a purchase transaction. You don't even get a, a, a rate ding for a cash out on that. Um, so it's treated exactly like a purchase. So it's, it's a, that's a great opportunity. Also, if you run into a lot of investor circles, people who, you know, have, have sit on a lot of cash, um, you know, want to swoop in, you can still, uh, you, you can still service that borrower. Yeah. yeah that's and a great is, golden nugget right there. It really yeah. is. And Annie mentioned after six months, use appraised value to catch up. I mean, that's a recent enhancement that's probably in the last three, four months. So it's really important for you to stay in touch with your account executive. These enhancements we've been doing since May 1st, 33 of them, they're coming fast and furious. And as we get further and further out from the pandemic, we our loans continue to perform. You know, who knows what other enhancements are coming down the road soon. So definitely stay in touch with your um Annie, can you answer a question for Vernon about uh, can we close in LLCs and other programs that we do for mm -hmm. investment properties? So, so yes. Yeah. So, so to piggyback off the previous question we just answered, because I just learned this seriously about two weeks ago. But um, for anybody who's ever done an investment refinance with us, the property cannot be vacant; it has to be occupied. Same thing under this program. Um, with the delayed program, with the delayed financing under this program, the borrower has 60 days to get a tenant in there. So, like, I had a deal, it's coming in, they're literally, they're closing on it at the end of this month, and then they want to refinance directly into us in the beginning of August. So, we're going to be okay with that property being vacant under this scenario, with it being technically a refinance. So, they have 60 days to get that property in. So, that was a guideline I just learned about. Um, okay, so going back to the original question, what was that again, John? It was about closing in an LLC oh, for investment properties across our portfolio programs. Perfect, not a problem. All it has to be, one stipulation, just has to be an investment property. So as long as it's an investment property, then we just need a copy of the LLC documents to show that the LLC is set up to be management of rental properties. Not a problem, there's no extra add to rate, there's no extra fee. Just make sure you tell us in the underwriting phase, because um, I have had people, you get to closing, oh, this was meant to be in an LLC. Even some of my best brokers, because they're so used to us being able to do that. So just make sure you mention it when the loan comes in the door, so that way underwriting can ask for the appropriate documents, but only needs to be an investment property. Yep. And on that delayed financing, if you paid cash, like Ben said, if you paid cash, yes, you can get all that cash out. And Kenny, hopefully that answers that question. I think the other question you have, Kenny, is a little bit more detailed. We'll talk about it. We'll get your account executive definitely to talk to you about uh, uh, other sources of, of cash, uh, other sources of where the cash came from. So we'll get into that detail with you on a on a one on one basis. Um, so yes, so Vernon, to, to go back to yes, if we're doing investment property on Prime Jumbo, if we're doing investment property on Portfolio Select, bank statements, investor cash flow. Uh, anything that's an investment property can close in an LLC as long as the LLC does not consist of more than two individuals. So we're 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 really good there. Any we're we're getting close to 45 minutes past the hour. The last program we do want to talk about, and hopefully Nick, this will maybe help you with your retired uh, borrower, uh, maybe based on the assets they may have. Any, why don't you um, give us a little bit of asset qualifier here? Awesome. I know you this program. I do, I do. Outside of bank statements and investor cash flow, it is my third highest performing program. So, and the reason it is, this is going to answer your question to the scenario we have all heard. They have all the money in the bank to buy this property with cash, but we cannot get them qualified. So this is the answer to that question. So what is not on the 1003, there is no employment on the 1003, there is no income on the 1003. We are not calculating the DTI. This is all gonna be based off the assets that are in their liquid assets. So when I say liquid asset, assets, we're talking about checking savings accounts. We're talking about investment accounts, mutual funds, stock markets. The one type of um, assets we cannot use, I cannot use trust accounts. We cannot use any type of business accounts. So if we're looking for these strong, liquid, high net worth borrowers. So, and that's what we're going to be using to qualify. What we're looking for, minimum 500,000 in, in assets, and they need to have enough to cover the purchase price. 
six months, um, six months reserves, and then five years of their monthly liabilities. So when I say monthly liabilities, that's everything that pulls up on their credit report. So for example, if they have $1,000 a monthly liabilities on their credit report, I need to see $60,000 in reserves. And that's all we're looking at, no income on the 1003. So I have actually done this loan for, this goes back to the self-employment question, I have done this loan, especially here in Seattle. Seattle, huge in tech, Amazon, Microsoft. I've had several borrowers say, I'm done with Amazon, I'm moving out to the country, I'm opening up my own business, they go to qualify for a loan, oh, I don't qualify, but, oh, guess what? I have five million in Amazon stock. So we <laughs> qualify them off that. So this answer your questions. If they do have the assets newly self-employed, we can use those assets. I do a lot of retirement borrowers off this program too. They do not want to start drawing off of their retirement. We can use IRAs, we can use 401ks. Um, and so not a problem. We're able to qualify them off their retirement and they don't have to draw off of it. Um, jumbo is not a problem. You see max up to 75% LTV. I've done jumbo loans up to 3 million down in Palm Beach. Once again, borrower, 10 million in the bank. Couldn't qualify because high net worth borrower. So always remember this for your borrowers. When you run into that scenario, they could buy it outright, but they can't get an income stream and they want to leverage their, the, it's all about leveraging liquidity with these buyers. So they, they want to take out that mortgage and keep that liquidity for them. Yeah, guys, this is <clears throat> this is a great program. And as Annie, you know, you know, if you're out there and you're hearing stuff like this, you know, call your call your account executive. They know these programs inside and out. You know, another scenario I heard last time, Annie was, you know, maybe unfortunately someone got divorced, but guess what? They got a lump sum of a uh, 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 payout. You know, and uh -huh. they maybe want to move on and 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 still be part of you know home ownership. Think yep. about that. So. You know, we'll talk about how to market yourself. Annie did a little tease there earlier about marketing yourself. We're going to talk a little bit about how you can market yourself to different different segments of the business world, not just, you know, chasing a realtor around, you know. So uh, we'll, we'll get there. Absolutely. You know, we have a lot of, lot of great questions. I promise this is being recorded. So you can go back and, and listen to the qualifications that Annie mentioned on Asset Qualifier, uh, talk about how we're going to do expense ratios on on bank statements and how we can help you capture more business so ben a lot of people of course everyone on this call wants to know how they get paid <laughs> and what are the rates <laughs> <laughs> you know because hey Naturally. No for free so uh so ben absolutely. take us through our um quick quote tool please absolutely and um you know the big thing about a non qm quick quote is that it's extremely fast it's easy it's mobile friendly you can get on this thing from your phone if you want to do a quick check and this is going to be almost scenario so that, again this is not going to include your lender paid comp this isn't going to have lender credits available just as a quick snapshot so you can run your own little scenario here to see if at this at the outside of it okay does this is this going to work is this within our guidelines and again if you have something close definitely still send it to us but um uh, we'll we'll just pull up a couple. We'll give you a couple examples. I guess showing is easier than telling, right? Um, so, John, go ahead and we'll do uh, we'll do an ICF. I, it's one of my uh, favorite products, our DSCR. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's do seven hundred fifty. Okay. Um, all right, we'll do seven hundred fifty thousand. We're going big here, Ben. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. A little bigger in the Philadelphia market, but I like it. Um, so credit score. Let's go ahead. And, let's just do a seven sixty. Let's just assume we got a pretty clean borrower out there. Uh, loan to value. We'll do a we'll do a cash out. So go and do a seventy, just do a seventy or a sixty five, whatever. Um, and we'll do a cash out. And then the big thing is income documentation. You want to select that bottom option, DSDR, and then occupancy. You want to select investment. A lot of people, if you don't see an option come up, it's probably because your occupancy is wrong. Um, so on this scenario, you'd be looking at four and a half uh, at par, which you're talking about a no ratio, no income, non owner rock loan. So when you look at the traditional world where their non-owner non -owner rock rates are right now compared to this, it's very, very attractive. Um, I mean, you're four and a half on that kind of cash out. That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty good. Um, and again, you can still invest in an LLC and, and you can have all the fun. The other thing I wanted to point out, John, that I didn't mention before, uh, the reserves. On this program, we only require reserves on our subject property. So there are people out there that do, you know, they want six months reserves on all REO. That is not us. We only need six months for our 
subject. So Great keep point. that in mind. It's, and the cash out counts toward reserves. So in this scenario, not only would you not have income or employment, but you wouldn't even need to upload assets. That's, you're uploading a driver's license and an appraisal. <laughs> that's, uh, <laughs> that, I, that, that's really how easy uh, this loan tends to be. Um, but that, I mean, that's what I'll give you a quick. Okay, so you have a four and a half, 30 year fixed rate at par, right? And everyone out there has different comp plans. So again, contact your account executive. They can go over what the add on would be. We have options of borrower paid, lender paid. Uh, but you're looking at a four and a half percent rate, 30 year fixed on a cash out, not having to bring a foot and a half of tax returns. I mean, you are literally, yes, and you're going to list all their real estate that they own on the uh, on the REO section of, of the loan application. We do require that, but you're not having to bring lease agreements in. You're not having to have, you know, does that property cash flow? Just this property, a subject property, and how it cash flows. So Ben, you were breaking up there. I didn't mean to talk over you there, so I just want to- Oh, sorry, uh, give us Absolutely. another scenario. Obviously, let's do a bank statement scenario, Ben. Let's yeah, do a big, yeah, let's big do a bank. Yeah, let's do a bank statement purchase. Um, and you can keep it so and so here. You want to go a million or uh, let's go one two five zero. All right, there we go. And uh, you want to do an eighty five or? We're gonna do an we'll eighty five, right? Yeah, and we'll move purchase. that to a purchase. And uh, for, and uh, twenty four months. Twenty four. That's our most popular. And mm -hmm. it's an owner occupied. So here, so here you go. Three point eight seven five on an eighty five LTV bank statement. No forty five oh six. Nobody is looking at how, if, when they file their tax returns. Um, so your your borrower is still receiving that tax <laughs> revenue that they're not paying, um, and that rate is oh extremely attractive. So again, with Johnson, everyone has different lender pay comp rates. I'm sure you can question it after question on that. Uh, it does depend on what your company is setting up on lender pay comp. Uh, but you're right, you can keep that rate at 3.875, or you can scale that rate up with, with lender pay comp or lender credits. We do we, we do all of it. So when you go to your local accounting section, they'll give you all of your comp options based on your company's uh, you know specifics. Obviously, we have, we have we have agreements that we have to adhere to. So um, you know whatever your company selects. We'll get you the options based on on uh, on their selection. Yeah, Debbie, we'll get you in touch. With, uh, you you want to know who your account executive is? We'll get you in touch with that. I just wrote down that to follow up with you right after the call. So we'll get you in touch with you. So, uh, so that's our pricing engine. You know, Annie's only available 23 hours a day. This uh, this uh, <laughs> quick quote is available is available 24 hours a day. And as Ben mentioned, it's also a little great scenario. You know, gives you you know, what our minimum loan amounts on e are, are on each of our programs. So, uh, and again, one of the things Ben mentioned, and Annie's mentioned this, we'll do this all up front for you as far as a, a prequal. 30% of the loans we close don't meet our guidelines. And, and the reason is the experts of the AEs that we have out there, they know that second, third, fourth level question to ask to make you say, aha, I think I got this now. So. Let us do that. And it's not, if they have questions on it, we have a help desk. When they publish a prequel for you, that's as good as a closed loan. So, you know, trust us with your business. Uh, Annie, everyone wants to know how we can market this. So let's uh, let's teach them. Yes, let's, let's teach in them. Here because all yeah. of our AEs are awesome AEs, right? Yes, yeah. so this is one of my favorite areas. And what's wonderful is being a part of the Angel Look family now for six years and working with a lot of my brokers very closely. You know, over this time frame, I have been able to see what they have done for marketing what was and what has worked and what has made them an expert in this area. So one of the first things you guys will want to want to do, go down to flyers. So we have flyers that are available already made for you guys to be able to use. So you can scroll down. I think if we scroll down, there's investor cash flow, there's bank statement, perfect. We can click on investor cash flow. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna take you to an area where you can customize it yourself. So you can fill in your name, you can upload your logo and click um, download and then it'll customize everything for yourself. So some of my most successful brokers in this industry 
I can you not, they are Instagramming our programs every three days. They are putting it on LinkedIn every three days. I wake up and I'm going through Instagram and boom, they're, they're, they're talking about platinum. They're talking about investor cash flow. So they are constantly in their, um, the eyes of their real estate agents, bank LOs, you know, they do a really good job in LinkedIn, you know, they're, they're LinkedIn with, you know, loan officers from banks who can't have access to these loans, real estate agents. I have a lot of them who have reached out to high net worth ma money managers uh, for your asset qualifier program. They get referrals from that. CPAs, I have brokers that go in and they will take lunches into CPA firms because they know who the self-employed borrowers are, who want to buy a home, who haven't been able to qualify in the past. So there's so many routes that you can go and market yourself. And the key that I have seen them do is they will do a constant email list for their emailing and they will constantly be on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, always updating, you know, the flyers, you know, my best broker, every time we have a new guideline change, but probably within 10 minutes, hey, Annie, you got a new flyer for me because he's already, he's ready to Instagram it. And another thing that he does is the minute he closes a really hard loan, you know, like when we closed our asset fire, qualifier loan for 3 million in Palm Beach, he put that all over social media. This is why they did not qualify conventional. This is what Angel Oak did. This is how we got it closed. So tell the stories of the hard loans that you have gotten closed, especially on social media, spread it through your network. You're going to get the questions coming in. And so not only do we have the flyers, we have social media flyers that you can download. We have really uh, videos that highlight all the programs within a minute that explain how they were. You can download those on social media. So, so get access to the portal. It's super easy to get access to the portal. Go to our homepage. All you have to do is fill out the broker user access form that's on our homepage, send it in to us. We'll get you access to the portal marketing tab go down play in the marketing tab we have presentations i guarantee you we have a pre-made presentation especially now we're out and about we're able to go back into offices all of us aes myself included we love talking about angel oak if you <laughs> have a presentation coming up with realtors reach out to us we are the experts i have done presentations in realtor offices up to 50 to up to 50 realtors so let us come in and be your expert. Let us tell the stories that we have from all of our experience of closing these loans and how we've been able to get very creative closing these loans because we all know stories sell. And real estate agents, there's still a lot of people out there, do these loans even close? This is my paycheck. They do. Let us be your expert, include us in on these meetings, we will do the selling. We will help you in these deals. We will help you become that expert. Yeah, Andy, Andy I love your passion about this. I really do. And, 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 and for those of you who are still on, I know we're getting close to the top of the hour. I brought up an example. I think this is one of the most powerful presentations you can do on behalf of, of a loan officer. And bring your Angel Oak trusted account executive in there, and they will present on your behalf. They will act like they're almost in the witness protection program. They won't say anything about Angel Oak. They just say, hey, we're going to, we're going to, this is all about Christina today. Christina's, in, Christina's your go-to loan officer here. She's the one, if you have a self-employed bar, call Christina. We'll talk about the program, but we'll direct them right back to the loan officer who's sponsoring that real estate outing. So, uh, Colleen, I know you said you showed up late. This is going to be recording, recorded, sorry, and we will get this out to you before end of day tomorrow. But Back to this, a couple of things. You don't need a couple of questions that are coming in. You don't need credentials to get to that quick quote. That is, you can access that, like I said, 24 seven without credentials. To access the marketing portal, you will need credentials. As Annie mentioned, you can go to our website and uh, the, the really easy to use website and you can go to access, um, I'm sorry, resources yeah, or uh, documents there. Uh, everything's underneath, underneath that's un, I'm sorry, that's underneath the application. You can get your uh, access request form for passwords here. Um, Annie, uh, Ben, before I let Annie close this out, Ben, share just a couple things. Say goodbye, tell us a little bit more Absolutely. about what, you know, Angel does well. 
Exactly, exactly to Andy's point, these, these programs are a way to differentiate yourself in a very tight market. Um, so if you're a loan officer, it's a way for you to expand your referral partners, your networks. Self-employed borrowers are everywhere, and most of the time they're pretty tight-knit. Uh, a lot of people on this call probably are members of a BNI. Every member of that BNI is self-employed, generally speaking, uh, or 1099. So, I mean, even in your own circles, you'll run into a lot of self-employed people who are going to take advantage of those, ta you know, of the tax system. Um, networking with CPAs and, and tax accounts. I know Andy loves that, that qualifier. They love these products because you're not going to require anyone to shift their tax strategy. They're not amending tax returns. They know their, their borrower is still in a better way by going with this loan instead of shifting everything that they're trying to do for their client. Um, and they also, we also allow those assets to stay under current management. We're not going to move anything. So they like that fact. Uh, but get, relying, you know, getting with your local account executives, honestly, is the best thing that you can do. Um, we have the best uh, team in, in, in the country. I'm a firm believer of that, obviously. Um, you know, we believe in that face-to-face -face rel relationship building. We want to get with you. We want to talk about your scenarios. Uh, I'm not going to tell you we can do every single scenario you have. Of course not. We're not going to say that. But um, if there's a will, there's a way. And we will walk those down with you and, and, and get those deals done. So it's a way to, to really differentiate yourself, especially in today's market. Uh, buying power, speed, uh, responsiveness, communication, customer service. You put all of it together, and that, and that's what creates a, a great partnership. So that's what we're uh, that's what we want to do. Uh, thank you, Ben. Really appreciate it. We're really lucky to have you here, and you know, and and now managing. So really do appreciate. Any any last parting words here? You know, we are so fortunate because we get to work in an industry where we get to see the outcome of our work. We get to help borrowers achieve the American dream through home ownership. And I'm always a big person of stories. And for me, it's very personal because by the time the borrowers get to us, they have been told no so many times. And so many of these borrowers, it is so important for them to be in this home. And it's a sign of achievement and hard work. And I was working with this borrower several years ago, immigrant to the US, worked very hard probably have been over here maybe three or four years, got under contract buying this million dollar home, already had $300,000 of his personal funds into this home. And you get down to the closing, they go in for final, CPA did an amazing job on his tax returns, didn't qualify. Loan came to us, the bank stayed my loan, we were able to get that loan closed for the borrower. He, he was able to keep his three, $300,000 of his own money. This, this builder was going to walk away with that $300,000. And we were able to get this borrower into his American dream. And that's what we do. And that's what you're going to find working with Angel Oak and our passion, working with your EE. We make home ownership for these borrowers come true. And what this borrower did is he told everybody, you have to go to this LO. Because after the five others said no and they didn't care and they didn't want to give the time, this one LO said yes, and we're going to find the program for you. And not only did they, I think they got five or six referrals of employees, friends, easy peasy loans. So taking the time to work with these borrowers, helping them achieve their dream, you're also going to achieve your dream of more business down the road and the success that it brings. Yeah, Annie, you know, I'm not going to say another word. Beautiful, you know. So, hey, we, you know, we, I know we ran over the hour here. Um, we really love and de your dedication to, to, you know, broadening your craft here. So whether it's 75% of you have not closed a bank statement loan in the last 12 months, call your account executive. If 85% haven't closed a debt service coverage loan, the opportunity is there. You know, that government box is getting smaller for uh, for second homes and investment properties. Reach out to your account executive. We really appreciate this is being recorded. We will get this out before end of the day today. Andy, I love working with you. Ben, it's an honor to have you on our team. Uh, everyone, thank you for joining us. Have an awesome afternoon. Thank you.